Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. Yesterday I illustrated a parametric approach to value at risk. And recall we said there are three basic approaches to value at risk or VAR. One is Monte Carlo simulation, two is non-parametric, and three is a parametric approach to VAR. Each of these three basic approaches is a big bucket that contains within several sub-approaches. Further, there are hybrids. For example, there is a hybrid between non-parametric and parametric. Today I'd like to illustrate a simple application of the non-parametric approach to estimating value at risk. We could also call this historical simulation and I think you'll see why. To do this, I'm going to use Google's price returns for the last 100 days. So I just now went to Yahoo Finance and pulled Google's stock price for the last 100 days, but I'm not plotting the stock price here. I'm plotting the daily periodic returns. That's the return day over day. It happens to be, for example, that last Friday, Google's stock dropped by a stunning 10% in a single day. So you can see here's the periodic return of negative 10% on a daily basis. As you would expect, most of the daily returns are clustered around 0%. We do have a positive outlier here, a stunning one day increase about two months ago of positive 18% in a single day. That's quite something. This sample is only 100 daily returns. That's a small sample, an actual historical return. I'm sorry, an actual historical simulation probably be a larger sample. If I take these daily periodic returns and just sort them and slot them into bins, then I've created a what we'd call a histogram or a frequency plot. And this shows me, for example, that there were fully 20 days out of the last 100 where the daily return fell between negative 1 and 0 percent. So we see, as we would expect, most of the daily returns are somewhere here around 0 percent in the neighborhood between negative 2 and 2 percent. We also see the classic phenomenon in our financial time series that's illustrated with these outliers here and that is the so-called fat or heavy tails, technically leptokurtosis. Here's yesterday's drop of negative 10% creates a heavy tail here and the positive 18% of about two months ago creates a heavy tail on this side. We also see probably some positive skew. Now that we've taken the daily returns for our small sample and plotted them into a histogram, the question of historical simulation is very simple. It's really just a quantile or percentile function. If we'd like to know the worst expected loss at 95% confidence, what all we're really doing is looking down here to the fifth percentile because historically that tells us that 95% of the time we don't lose more than this. If we want more confidence, say 99%, we're going to have to move to the right, maybe here or here, probably somewhere here we're going to be interpolating because that tells us that at least historically 99% of the time we don't lose more than this level. So the histogram plots the actual loss experience and then as the user we as always with VAR we have to select a confidence level so there's no single right VAR. We select a 90 percent, a 95, a 99 percent and with higher confidence we're going to move progressively here to the left with greater losses. But at 95 percent confidence for example which corresponds to 5 percent significance we're ascertaining historically the worst expected loss for that level of confidence which is really just a percentile or quantile and also here we can see a classic weakness with VAR. This, this is about four, a loss of neg uh, four or five percent at 95 percent confidence. It happens to be that 
there's a pretty big outlier here, a, a significant loss that's much in excess of this level. This is our value at risk. It tells us nothing about the magnitude of the extreme losses in the tail. This point could be way out here to the left or it could be it could be nearer to our VAR level. The level of VAR itself does not tell us about the magnitude of the losses in excess of the VAR. So it's a classic weakness of the VAR. So that's the graphical interpretation. If I go to the numbers here, same numbers. Here's my number of observations, small sample of 100. Here's the data. That's for Friday, July 18th. Google's price closed at 481. And then I've simply calculated the periodic returns under continuous compounding. That's just the natural log of Friday's price divided by Thursday's price. So I have here in green the historical series of the daily periodic returns that we already looked at graphically. And then in purple, I took the same series and sorted it from highest to worst. So green is sorted in order of time, purple is sorted in order of magnitude. And now to calculate that 95th percentile VAR that I'm just using as an example, remember we select that, could be 99%. Calculating the 95th percentile VAR is as simple as, in this case, using Excel's function, percentile, I give it the range or the array, the full range in green, you can't see the whole thing, and then at 95% confidence, I want the fifth percentile because I'm looking down the list to near the bottom to the fifth percentile. Near the bottom, but not at the bottom. Just to show you, that would match if I used Excel's small function because I have 100 observations, and small here gives me the fifth smallest value because I entered five here. So the in this case, because I have an even number of observations that I deliberately selected, my fifth percentile corresponds to my fifth smallest value, which is negative 4.1%. And if we look down the purple here, again, green is sorted by time. Purple is indifferent to time. And I'll go down the list. And we'll see here at the bottom, here's that, here's last Friday's negative 10% drop. That would correspond to a VAR at the 100 percentile, 100% confidence. Here's VAR at the 99th percentile. Here's VAR at the 98% or 98% confidence, 97%, 96. And here's that negative 4.1% that we calculated above that corresponds to VAR with 95% confidence. And so you can see it's a pretty simple lookup function. And given the historical simulation, we can also already see a couple of the advantages and disadvantages of historical simulation. Advantages include that it's very simple to execute and intuitive. Disadvantages include the fact that it's really indifferent to the timing of these returns. As long as the return enters into our window, it really doesn't matter. You'll recall yesterday's negative 10% counts the same as the positive 18% that was over two months ago. So it's indifferent to the timing is a possible critique of the historical simulation. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time. <music>